I will uh, in a bit. I will open the uh, for today's uh, webinar for today's event. So, uh, do we have all of the all of the uh, okay? We have all of the speakers today here with us already joined us. Okay, so uh, hello everyone. So uh, I'm gonna open the uh, for today's event. So Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Stockholm University International Webinar. Smart smart vehicle in smart city in collaboration with with uh, du, du ta, with Dutan University Vietnam, the Dalian News of University of Information China, and uh, Bapeda Semarang. <coughs> uh, for today's event, uh, to start uh, today's event, we will need to pray first according to your own religion and beliefs. So. But to all the participants and audience, please pray first. Pray start. Amen. Pray, pray finish. Okay, okay. Uh, and I'm going to uh, tell you for today's skill. Uh, after the opening, we will listen to Indonesian National Anthem. Then uh, we will have our rector uh, our second university rector, Dr. Jo Joseph Teguh Santoso, uh, as the opening speech. Then we have our first speaker, th that would be uh, Dr. Anan Naj I'm sorry, Dr. Anan Najar uh, from Dutan, Dutan University of Vietnam. Then we have our Professor Peng Chu uh, from Dalian Nausa. University of Information China. Then uh, for our last speaker, we will have our, from BAPEDA, uh, our speaker from BAPEDA, Mr. Muhammad Lutfi. And for the last session that we will have Q&A session. Uh, in the Q&A session, uh, you guys can write your, I'm sorry, write your question in the chat room or later in the session, you can raise your hand and ask the question directly to the speaker. And for the next ev event, we will have to listen to Indonesia National Anthem. To the operator, the time is yours. We can't hear you. Madam, we can't hear you. Thank you, everyone. And the next session is opening speech by our rector from Stockholm University, Dr. Joseph Teguh Santoso. You may take first.
Dr. Uh, Joseph. Okay. Mr. Miss Novita, thank you very much. Uh, bisa dengar suaranya ya? Yes. Uh, hello everyone. Uh, good, good evening, Mr. Anan. Hi. How are you, Mr. Anan? And, I'm fine, sir. And Professor Peng Chou. Hi. Hello. <笑>你好 Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen and and one others is a is, Mr. Lufti Eko Nugroho, apakah sudah di sini Pak Lufti? Belum. Oke. Okay. Mungkin moderator bisa cek ya. Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, the honorable our speaker today, Dr. Anand Nayar, assistant professor, researcher and Scientist from Tui Tan University, Tanang, Vietnam. Mr. Lufti Ekonugroho from uh, Litbang Fisik Prasarana and Lingkungan Bapeda Kota Semarang. And Professor Peng Chou from uh, Director of E-Commerce Department, Tarian New South University of Information and all of distinguished guests. Ladies and gentlemen, May I first take this occasion to pay tribute to all the audiences of this international webinar with the title Smart Vehicle in Smart City, held by Stecom University in collaboration with Tuitan University, Tanang Vietnam, Talian New South University of Information, and also subsector of research and development of physical infrastructure and environment by Petasma. It is a great pleasure and an honor for me to deliver this welcome remarks at the opening of this international webinar, may I first take this opportunity to express my gratitude and appreciation, as well as extend a cordial welcome to all the audiences, in particular our speaker of today's event. Ladies and gentlemen, our today's event will discuss about the development of smart vehicle. Smart city is an innovation that developed in the last 10, uh, in the last 10 years by Utilizing sensors, actuators, cloud technology as data and information centers connected to broadband communication network. The concept of smart city will produce a variety of new service scenarios from, for the community so that it can be changed the style and way of life of people and increase economic growth. Based on the research that I got from Polistra, it it was stated that in 2050, the global population is approaching 10 billion with a percentage of 70% being urban people. The concept of smart city is a, part, is a part of a new mechanism to build and organize the city and environment. Within it, with a variety of integrated internet connectivity to prepare for the future and a better quality of life. Ladies and gentlemen, in the 21 century, the concept of smart city can be translated into several main components which include smart economy, governance, society, science, technology, community life, and the environment. Smart cities are urban areas where there are various sectors that work together to achieve sustainable result through real-time information analysis by sharing specific information and operational technology system. The global of government to implement smart city is to improve operational effectiveness in meeting service to the public by utilizing technology and for the purpose of making decisions quickly and accurately in real time. Because of that, we need a system that can integrate the main components and their derivatives, namely smart house, 
smart vehicle, intelligent transportation system, and others. Especially for a smart vehicle, develop the development of this uh, system leads to intelligent automobile system or autonomous vehicles that are designed to work like the human brain. The core of smart vehicle is the Internet of Vehicle with an application of Internet of Things, IoT technology in intelligent transformation system or ITS that lead to the development of the vehicle to everything or V2X including the vehicle to vehicle, vehicle to infrastructure, and vehicle to pedestrians, vehicle to road, and vehicle to network, which require ultra high reliability. Ladies and gentlemen, based on <clears throat> the information above, it can be concluded that development of technology nowadays gives impact in all six stars of our life. One of them is the development of smart vehicles. I hope through this international webinar, we can get more information about smart vehicle in smart city. To conclude, I would like to extend my appreciation to the uh, International Office Organization of Stockholm University for making this international webinar. And finally, I wish you to enjoy the webinar to this. Let's pray that our effort remains in the blessing of God Almighty. Amen. Thank you very much. Mr. Miss Anisha or Miss Novita, you may continue. Thank you for this opening speech. And for the next activity, it will start with a presentation from Dr. Ananaya from Duitan University, Vietnam. For Dr. Anan, you can first for presentation. Can you see my screen, ma'am? Yes, yes. yes can. And can you hear me properly? Yeah. Thank you so much for confirmation. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I, Dr. Anand Naya, professor and computer scientist in School of Computer Science, Dutan University, welcome you all on this webinar of Smart Vehicles in a Smart City. The topic is really appropriate considering 2021 and of course, we all know that the world is moving towards smart cities and smart vehicles is known as one of the most important critical part of being a complete smart city, or I can say a complete sustainable city in the near future. So it is very important for us that we should understand this technology, the connected technologies, or I can say plethora of technologies that are connected together that make up a smart vehicle. So indeed a lecture is uh, very big, but I will try to cover the lecture, the most important contents in next 30 to 35 minutes so that all of you can be motivated and you can all see that what exactly is the connecting technologies, what is the things that make the connected car possible and what we see the future of mankind in next coming five to 10 years. Of course, ladies and gentlemen, the future is really bright and we can all say that the cars and of course the technologies that is making up these electric vehicles to flying cars is indeed a really, really remarkable thing. At one time, it was seen as a magical thing, uh, just a sci-fi movie or just a James Bond movie. But today we all know that the flying car is really a possible thing. And in the near future, we can even see this technology coming ahead. And maybe in the near future, we can all say that uh, we can just go to some station, we can just uh, see the cars flying and we can even migrate to one uh, planet to another planet. And even from earth to moon, we'll be like moving in a plane from India to China or maybe from Vietnam to USA. So ladies and gentlemen, let me all welcome you to this uh, concept of mine that will be the autonomous revolution of vehicles and transportation. And if you really want to know about, more about my research, you can see my Google Scholar. And even you can see my book that is Internet of Drone Things. And me and my team is working very closely for the design and development of autonomous vehicles. And we are specialized towards computer vision, sensors, internet of everything. And of course, we are drafting some routing protocols and improving the quality of service of vehicular clouds. So that is the research that can we are doing currently in our university. Yeah. Can you explain a little? Sorry, can you explain a little bit, little bit slowly? Hello? Hello? Can you explain a little bit slowly, maybe? Okay, ma'am. Okay. Yeah, thank you. So everybody, we can see that the autonomous vehicles is basically known as a plethora of converging technologies. 
whatever you can see today, whatever the human brain can even think of today, we can say of internet of things, cloud computing, artificial intelligence, computer vision, explainable artificial intelligence, and of course, the series of wide end futuristic communication technologies, all is coming together to make up a internet of vehicle or the smart vehicles of the future. So let's start with the discussion of the transportation technology timeline. And you can see that the first wheeled vehicle started from 3500 BC, followed with the first public transportation in 1662. It is followed by the first gas automobile in 1862. And we are in 2021 now, when we are talking of flying vehicles, we are talking of drones technology. And of course, we are talking of hybrid vehicles, electric vehicles, and even the smart vehicles. So this timeline is a big uh, example in front of us that of course the transportation has really seen a plethora of advancements in the decades. And of course this has improved the way of transporting the people from one place to another in coming years. So today we can see the transformations in the mobility space. And you will all agree with me that we are now transforming ourselves from gas powered to electric vehicles. And even we have seen that Elon Musk has even given a big statement these days that I will not stop and I will not stop the innovations unless I see electric vehicles all around. And even of course, you can see that the human powered vehicles at one time, we can see even today, the car is fully under our control which means I'm the superpower, I have to drive the car, and now the car is getting the control of autonomous. But you can see that autonomous platforms, mobility as a service, it is taking up different forms. You can see cars, drones, you can see the autonomous vehicles, and even in the near future, I would like to tell you that the drones delivery, even the packages delivery, we will not see any courier wala to coming to our homes, we all see that the vehicles will come. You have to authenticate your parcel with your identification or QR code, and the parcel will be delivered to you instantly. And this is all becoming a huge as a service in the near future. So you can see that autonomous vehicles is going to change our world. And these are the three important pillars that you can see on the screen. The first pillar, of course, is customer experience. It is changing the lives. It is creating freedom. Consider the people like me who don't, who don't uh, have the knowledge to drive a vehicle. Even today, I drive a motorbike. Consider the people who are disabled. Consider old people who don't want to drive the vehicle. They just have to come inside the car and the car will just be instructed with the voice and they will be transported from one place to another. Consider a broader disruption considering the resetting of the physical landscape. And of course, the industries like Vameo, Hyundai, Honda, even companies like Microsoft, Google, they are doing a broad aspects in terms of autonomous vehicles. And of course, I see, if you talk of business opportunity, we see Tesla, we see Siemens, we see Hyundai, they are working closely hard, even Mercedes and Audi, these companies are making up massive trillion dollar investment in the whole world. And it is creating a plethora of technological advancements in this transportation sector. Ladies and gentlemen, I have good connections across the world in Audi, Mercedes. My friends are there. They told me one thing, that there was a time when we only hire mechanical engineers or automobile engineers in auto industry. But you will be stunned to know that today, almost 40% of the engineers they hire are of artificial intelligence, even mechatronics and robotics. And they're hiring like anything, which means at one time, this field was actually closed with a few one or two engineering aspects. But considering the smart cities, considering the revolution, this field is actually booming with tons of engineering disciplines working at the same point of time. And that is known as revolution. That is how making the base for this type of vehicles. So the auto industry is seeing the face of change like we have seen never before. So it is technological, autonomous revolution, electric vehicles. And of course, it is giving birth to tons of 
connectivity options when we talk of advanced vehicular communications we talk of advanced 5g 6g in the near future even let me tell you ladies and gentlemen today if we talk of ieee 802.11p as a standard in the near future we will even say 6g will lay the foundation for the mankind so of course in the terms of society it is a revolution and we are putting up good in terms of regulations also please mute yourself so intel is one of the company that is driving the road to autonomous vehicles and you will all agree with me that we started with electromechanical safety and with just the electronic stability and airbags control now we have come towards in vehicle infotainment we have media players we have google auto apple is also being rumored that one day they will also make apple glasses apple car also so even apple is working together and of course today in 2021 we have parking assistance but in the near future i'm talking of 2023 or 2027 we can say that complete lane keeping autonomous braking and of course cruise control will be in the hands of the cars so maybe you will take the control in you or not the car will take over the control but the future is this everybody that i would like to tell you this is called self driving so when the cars don't need you to even touch anything or the cars will not have any controls in their have so you can say that we just have to sit in the car be relaxed just say hey car take me to this place hey car let's go the car will autonomously take the detection of the traffic autonomously take the shorter route with artificial intelligence and it starts working on so you can say that the computational requirements are even increasing with the functionalities so you don't say that only a car is having ai it is even having the best computer in the world which is fitted inside as a you can say software brain for the car that is driving the car from one place to another so you can see that this is known as the biggest chart for you to understand what exactly is the progression towards autonomous driving so see this everybody the field is not very old we started in 2015 with adaptive cruise automatic braking and we can see in 2021 we are actually reducing the number of sensors multiple sensors are working as one and the number of sensors are even being reduced and of course we are moving towards level 4 automated driving but i see this future in 2027 when the cars will have full autonomous control that is as per usa based driving capability we lead to level 5 and of course everybody we have started from automated driver uh, or highway driving we have gone for automation in domains but now the future is towards fully autonomous driving and that is what will make us the city is connected like anything so this is actually known as the biggest diagram as per the national highway traffic safety administration the road to full automation see this today mostly we we drive the vehicles with no automation we start the car we put the gear we put some speed and acceleration we drive with the steering wheel and we take care of the traffics and even the road based transportation of course we can use smartphones for uh, driving assistance but still we have to make some complex computations driver assistance level 1 level 2 when we talk of partial automation and of course cars are now having level 2 based automation today but in 2021 onwards we can say that driver will be a necessity but still the car can make some autonomous decisions in level 4 that is 2022 or 2023 we can say the the car will perform most of the functionalities and of course driver can have control which means if you have the control or you don't have the control still level 4 will be improving the control like anything and in level 5 we are moving towards full automation which means when the car will not have even a steering wheel no brake no pedals no gear you just have to instruct the car talk with the car and let the car do the rest of the things and that is the highest level of automation that we can expect in next 2 or 3 years that will be the foundation store for intelligent vehicle transportation system ivts so you can see that with autonomous vehicles it is having the most widespread features 
fewer accidents, less congestion, better parking assistance, city planning, less car travel. We can even see mobility to the best wise because of course the cars can even take the decisions using cloud computing and 6G mobility will be the best of the class. It increases the convenience. And of course, like I started my lecture, it will be most benefited for the elderly people. And believe me, everybody, this car based technology is going to change the way of life that we see today. Imagine movies like Star Trek, James Bond movies are becoming a reality. Imagine when you don't have to be stuck in traffic jams on the, uh, on the road, you can even fly the car. Imagine if you don't know how to drive a car, still you are taking and talking with your family and car is taking up every critical decision for all of you. So this is one of the survey that I would like to tell you. This was a survey that was being done in USA that when the Americans expect the driverless cars to be common, and you will be stunned to know that the future is not very far. Almost most of the people have this data that in next five to seven years, we will see this driverless cars running in the city. But everybody, don't, uh, uh, you don't say that, okay, Tesla or maybe Elon Musk or Hyundai or maybe Maruti, they make the autonomous cars. We are happy. Let's start the vehicle. It's not. You will be, I will be telling you, you require to have, you need to have a better city planning. Because why? This car will be a plethora of sensors. It requires a hybrid cloud computing. It requires a massive connectivity, which is 5G or maybe 6G. So don't think that only car uh, is there so we can start the car. No, you need to have better critical infrastructure that is required to make this car to function and work appropriately. So everybody, you can see this is one of the important data in front of you and see that in next coming two or three years, we can have the consumer availability. Of course, we have a huge expectations from Audi, Mercedes, Tesla. We have some expectations from Vimo. We are even having some good expectations from other government companies. So you can see that uh, this autonomous technology is going to take over with the smart cities, change the way that we live today. So now everybody, I would like to tell you some technologies with regard to sensors, systems, and imaging. Now see this. Now, if you talk of a car, everybody, now see this. You will uh, you don't say that car will only having one camera. Camera will be the eyes for the car. So if you talk of the eyes of the car, you need to give the world's best computer vision. And that is the area where I'm working. I'm working that how the car can behave in complex environments, like heavy snowfall, heavy rainfall. Even if suppose there is a, a hailstorm, like in Dubai, if we talk of, uh, you can say a huge uh, non-visibility based areas where even traffic lights are, where even the street lights are not working. You need the best vision cameras. And you can see that radar, lidar, and computer vision cameras are doing their best. Right now, Sony, is one of the companies that is the forerunner and that is making these type of visible cameras. We are having right now 48 megapixel camera, which is fitted with the car. And of course we have night vision cameras with advanced object recognition, detection, street light detection, street signs recognition. We have the everything of AI and machine learning fitted into these cameras so that the cars can see. And believe me, we are actually changing the way that how the car is going to behave in the real time. At one time, it was not very advanced, but now with LIDAR, radar technology, I'm working with sensors myself, it is improving like anything. So you can see from this diagram, we have different types of sensors that are actually connected in a car. So you can say that car is basically known as a huge network of sensors. I can say it's a cyber physical system, which is connected. And of course you can even control your car with your smartphones. And of course cars can be autonomously controlled. So these type of sensors will make the car to take the real time critical decisions. So this is one of the area that I'm right now working. We are working on the third generation now. 
in which we are not talking of object detection, we are talking of 360 degree object recognition. At one time, we were at 217 degrees, but now our research is now coming towards 360 degrees. So more angles we use, more complexity we generate. And of course, we need better artificial intelligence, more Python libraries, better codings, and of course, we need better cameras so that the car can make complex decisions in real time. Now, imagine everybody, the whole world is complex. We see pedestrians, we see symbols, we see policemen controlling the car, we can see accidents also, we can see open road also. Now, imagine how much training and data set based, uh, you can say retraining of these machines are required so that the car can become self acquainted and that's why we can say that we are moving towards AI version 3.0, explainable AI, so that we can make this car comfortable to make the decisions in real time. Believe me, everybody, don't say that this car is only cyber physical systems or a neural networks based computing engine. You can even say that this is car is a learning system. Every time it goes to the road, it is learning from experience. It is enhancing its experience and it is making complex decisions better and better. And that's the reason everybody, if you really want to do research in autonomous vehicles, computer vision advancements is one of the best areas that you can publish the papers. And this is one of the redundant systems that you can see with radar and lidar. So these days we are working on 16X now. And of course, in the real time, the cameras are working with 14X optical zoom, but still we are having problems with edge recognitions. But in the near future, we can have these cameras with the optical zoom of more than 30X, 50X and 80X. So this is one of the sensors market that you can see in the LIDAR market that we can expect that by 2027, this LIDAR market is going to be about $4.4 billion. And that is the clear proof that this futuristic industry has the biggest convergence of technologies that we have not even imagined today. And see this everybody, this is where I am actually doing my research with my team here. So we started from level one, that is almost object detections. We have gone with more features, more betterment when we are actually implementing Python and R language. But now we have advanced libraries. We have NVIDIA technology. We are using NVIDIA Jetson Nano with advanced SDKs in my lab. And we are now working with advanced 3D detection also. So in the near future, I want that the car can even integrate digital twins. Maybe I'm one of the, one of, one of the uh, core professors in the world that is actually making up a digital twin model for the car that how we can 3D map a road and we can take some real time decisions in a very appropriate and quick manner. So that is the reason we are now moving from level one to level five. Uh, but we still need to improve this technology like anything because uh, right now the acceptance rate and the accuracy rate is not touching even 70%. I'm working on 61%, which is not even like, which is not, a, you can say that it's a bad work. It's a very advanced work. So this is what you will see in the car, everybody. That is the actual picture of the car. So you can see that the car will have tons of sensors, initial, inertial, pressure, infrared, and of course, radio frequencies. And of course, this car will be having long range antennas for 5G antennas for better connectivity. So you can see that the car will have accelerometers, gyroscopes, infrared sensors, micro sensors, head up displays, pressure sensors, flow sensors, any sensor on this planet will be integrated in the car, which is which you can say it's a miracle to see and car will be a complete network system of sensors of sensors. So you can see, considering the sensor market, this market is increasing like anything. I did my PhD in 2017 in sensor communications. At that time, this industry was about $10 billion. And believe me, I have written tons of papers in sensor communications. I have written seven transaction papers in this area. And we expect that by 2023, this industry will be around double, or I can say triple by 2070. So everybody, if you talk of autonomous process, you can see what we do in the car. 
we just see the road we act as per the things like whether you want to go left or right or whether you want to brake steer or you want to close the car so you can say that we require ultimate connectivity vehicle to vehicle vehicle to infrastructure and vehicle to network and cloud computing advanced cloud computing and of course we require gps sensors for location sensing with radar lidar sensors and of course camera and this is where ai will work and that is where we are working we are adding up the tons of sensors we are adding artificial intelligence with python huge data science that we can process for experience and with that things we are making the car to do the actions like whether the car will stop whether the car will increase the speed or whether the car will move left or right believe me everybody if you really want to do the motion the car has to perform lots of complex operations that what is the speed of the car where is the safety distance should i move ahead should i give some horn or what is how we can reach the destinations how we can do that so believe me this is over here the thing is over here when we actually add thinking fusion to the car so car is actually known as a learning machine with advanced computational intelligence to make the decisions and to learn from experience and that is where you can see the brain of the car which you can see as a software brain self driving brain with hd routing video uh, vehicle connectivity total cost optimization and of course improvement in infrastructure and everybody i would like to come to this now this is where you can see the leader board right now and you will all be stunned to know that right now the leader in the world is general motors vamio and even tesla and ford but still most of the people are coming under contenders today so you can say in near future the toyota bmw renault and even you can say the most popular companies like honda even hitachi is also working apple is working google is working everybody is contributing something to this world of technology so if you ask me that sir can we make a can we make a career in uh, auto in uh, vehicle industry i always say it is the bright career it is the most brightest career that you can see in the car today if you are knowing about data science ai cloud computing for computing edge computing and of course sensor technology so now everybody the most important framework for all of you which is again a question to all of you that many people ask me that sir you are a computer hacker and uh, even i am a computer hacker so i am a uh, you can say a very trained ethical hacker and many people ask me this question that sir can we hack these cars even alan musk has told that uh, i will give you 50000 dollars if you can hack tesla and believe me i have some av infrastructures i have done some viruses and even ransomware for these type of infrastructure of cars but till today we are not much successful in the near future this is another area that over here we want to create a complete end to end encryption network which means because when we the car is generating the data all this data is being transmitted via the car through the internet to the cloud so we want that blockchain technology should work and all the data is converting to blocks with sha1 algorithm and this algorithm is so strong that not even a quantum computer can break it so my area now which is second number area is security so if you can see some of my papers i am doing some uh, papers with blockchain security for smart cities and we have recently got acceptance of one more paper in which we have designed a blockchain based hyperledger system for the car so that no intrusion and hacker attack can be possible and soon i would like to give this framework to two companies and after getting my us patent which is already in progress so the connected car services you can see we have live assistance of agent communication location services and of course we have the apps so everybody you can see now this is a question to all of you to think now now this is a question to think is your country how many people are listening to me i don't know now is your country have any service provider with so much of speed to one car which means you can say that an autonomous vehicle is requiring 4000 gb per day and i'm not talking of seconds today i'm talking of milliseconds base speed 
So that's the reason everybody, if you really want to drive the car, you need to improve the wireless infrastructure. And that's the reason these cars are actually made to build up the smart cities, which are mega cities of technology. So that's why we need to hyperscale our thinking. We need to hyperscale our converging technologies to make this car possible under the sun that one day we will drive this autonomous vehicle. So everybody, I would like to give you one important thing. So at one time, when we talk of level two and level three, we are talking of edge computing. But now this edge is improving with level four. It is becoming edgier. And in the near future, when we talk of autonomous vehicles, machine to machine interaction, machine to human interaction, cyber physical systems, society 5.0, this technology will become edgiest, which means that uh, we have the technology of sensing, processing, and of course, acting. And everybody in the near few, I would like to wind up in two minutes. You can see this is going to be the smart city of the future. And if you really want to have some information about this type of uh, infrastructure, you need to understand IEEE 802.11p, which is again, a unlicensed 5.9 gigahertz IITS network. And uh, you can see the vehicles are being connected and an autonomous revolution with 5G technology will be the base. But I don't say, I'm a computer scientist, I don't say that 5G will be the perfect system. No, it is not. Uh, if you really ask me that what the future should be of communication, if we want to transform the mankind, we want to build up this infrastructure, at least 6G is required. So even right now, Huawei, Nokia, and Samsung, these three are the major players that is actually revolving the cities and with AT&T collaboration, and uh, we can see that with this infrastructure, we can go for intelligent communication of car to cloud computings. And uh, this is one of the technology that you can see, as we all know, Elon Musk has given us Starlink, but if you really want to talk of one more technology for hyperscale connectivity of satellites, like today we fly the drone, I am a drone pilot, and uh, we need at least five to seven GPS satellites, at least, for the drone so that drone can uh, fly autonomously. They can uh, come to the home based features. So in that we need to work with this Trimble RTX technologies. And this will be, you can say leveraging of GPS, GLONASS, Baidu, and of course QZZ systems. If you talk of Cisco technology today, this is going to be the remarkable revolution in satellite and cellular communication that is actually required for the car to move in the smart cities. And with this, I would like to share one more thing, everybody. This is going to be the multi-path communication systems for autonomous vehicles. And you can see that we have started from Ethernet and we are moving towards satellite-based Starlink and RTS technologies. And that's the reason, everybody, for massive scale of connectivity, I'm talking of not hundred sensors or thousands of sensors. I'm talking of zettabyte-based data connectivity in data science. I'm talking of plethora of sensors working in a second, or I can say a millisecond. And that's the reason we need to process them with a better fork computing and edge computing. And that's the reason IoT or internet of everything will rule the world. So you can even say that if we talk of today's vehicle, it should not be smart vehicle. It should be internet of smart connected vehicle with intelligent sensing technology. So with this, everybody, I would like to wind up this lecture. I hope all of you have enjoyed it. Now, if you have any question, you can ask me. I would love to take some of your questions. Yeah. Thank you for the presentation. It's very easy to understand. Hopefully, the knowledge concept can be useful for the audience who watch today's webinar. For the next presentation, we have Professor Peng Zhou from Dalian Yusof University from Vietnam. Yeah, you, China, sorry. You can start for presentation. Thank you. Okay, can you hear me?
Yes, we can hear you. Okay, good. Thank you. Okay, let's start. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm from Tallinn University of Information and uh, uh, Professor Nea, your, uh, your lecture, uh, has, uh, my lecture has something in common with yours because you know we both have, uh, have so much confidence in smart vehicle, the smart city. Uh, my topic is the vision. A vision of smart vehicle, a perspective from auto drive and industry uh, networks. First, I would like to share my vision uh, about the smart vehicle in smart city. And uh, we would like to uh, share the, some background of the, uh, of the vision. We call it the revolution from smart vehicle is coming. Uh, the two professors lecture all mentioned the, the word revolution. It's a, it's an innovation, a very inno innovation. And uh, uh, I would like to share the background of the this vision about the common problem. The first one will be traffic congestion. So smart vehicle and a smart city is not a necessary vision, but it's a must. The traffic congestion is a big problem among the world cities. And the sec second one is climate change. We know the world now is, is initiated uh, a, a big campaign called carbon neutralization. And uh, almost all the developed countries are dealing with climate crisis. So the smart vehicle is the means we human beings can use to, to deal with the climate crisis. And now in China, we know uh, the smart vehicle, it, there is a big, huge market for smart vehicle now. What smart vehicle is like? Uh, Dr. Nia mentioned the, 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 the concept of safety. Yes, I think safe is the first requirement for a vehicle. The, the commodity or the product of, of a vehicle, we need, we need it will be safe. And the second, it should be simple. It can be put to popular use and we can drive it easily. Or there is a, a system called, called auto flight or auto drive. The third is energy economy. And uh, you guys can uh, learn from the uh, from the website or the papers that uh, there is a power limit in China in mainland China now. So the energy economy is a it's very very a problem, a issue for uh, for, uh, for the the smart 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 vehicle. The new energy, uh, so the new energy technology will be very, very important issues for developing uh, as, as smart vehicles in smart cities. And the force will, will be in a business sense called shared. The business model is sharing or revolution, it's very, very revolutionary. We know that we used to buy a car and uh, the, the ownership of a car, a car is, is very common in, in our brains, but now the business model should be revolutionized by shared model. 
you know, we know the uh, there are some startups or the big techs like uh, Uber, like Didi. They all called, can be uh, viewed as shared shared economy. So to be smart uh, to uh, to have a smart vehicle in in uh, the division of a smart city should be a shared economy. So what can uh, what uh, what can support the the smart vehicle in smart city? Uh, in this part, I would mention standardization and uh, compatibility. And it, it is a bit academic because it is from my uh, doctoral uh, dissertation. Uh, how we can understand the standardization or compatibility? It's just like software, the, the software protocols and uh, uh, the interfaces compatibility need technology standardization, just like, you know, uh, iOS, the Apple's iOS and Android, Android uh, uh, Google's Android, it's a different system. They are not compatible in some, in some ways, in some aspects. And uh, this is a problem for our users. So the compatibility and the standardization is very, very important. And the second, the network effects in standardization adoption. The network effects is an important concept in the IT. I would like to call it IT economics or net, uh, network economics. It's very, very in contrast to the traditional concept like decreasing in returns. It, is, it appears increasing returns to the large scale users. So networks effects is very, very important in our, uh, in our uh, standardization and the compatibility thinking. The third, platform matters. Just like we buy a, 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 a phone, we can use Android, uh, Android uh, system or uh, iOS system. We choose a vehicle, we choose a platform. We, we know, we know uh, the, the vehicle platform like Tesla, like uh, in China, like uh, there's startups called uh, Xiaomi, like uh, Huawei, like uh, Neo. So the smart, uh, the vehicle, the smart vehicle platform is for the users is, is to choose, it's, it's a problem. It's a very a problem because the coordination of standards or the compatibility between standards, it will be very, very important in the future. And uh, next, I would like to introduce our Neurosoft Automobile Intelligent Networking System. It's, it's a very engineering concept. Uh, our, our university held the, uh, held the education idea called Top Cares, and we emphasize, we cherish the, the the engineering thought. So uh, I study business and uh, some economics, but I still uh, like to uh, study some engineering works like this, Neurosoft uh, Automobile Intelligent Networking System. Neurosoft Automobile uh, Intelligent uh, networking system provide fast service landing integrated intelligent network services for passengers 
passenger cars and the commercial vehicles and the new energy vehicles. And uh, the system has, has formed a cooperation with a big uh, car producer in China. The first will be vehicle computing platform and a smart cockpit system. And this uh, concept, uh, uh, Dr. Nia had mentioned above, and uh, we all uh, and uh, we all have the the, the Dr. Mayer uh, Nia uh, mentioned the the system in a Neurosoft system. This is vehicle computing uh, platform. And uh, the first point will be hardware can be upgraded and the computing power can be shared. Function can be extended and I think the premise of this uh, of these operations will be modular or standardization. So standardization and modular uh, in the production of smart vehicles, uh, uh, smart vehicles will be very very important. This is smart cockpit system. It is based on mainstream high performance processors support, supporting multiple hardware platforms. And it, 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 it is adopting new source independent research and development of visualization technology. And the visualization technology will be uh, very, very important in, in the uh, smart vehicles uh, ADAS uh, system. And the multi-modal model interaction. So uh, there is uh, voice recognition and gesture recognition, driver monitoring, uh, these functions will be very, very intelligent in the uh, smart uh, smart vehicle of of new uh, new soft systems, and of course, it can realize multi-screen interaction. And the CarPlay, mobile internet, and the Bluetooth Wi-Fi. These uh, uh, basic, uh, basic uh, uh, functions all will be included in that. The next generation uh, communication domain uh, co controller solution integrating V2X, V2X uh, like uh, IoT, it means vehicle to uh, things. So shark fin antenna, 5D, Ethernet, CAN, Wi-Fi, BLE, Tuna. These things it is can contribute to the intelligent connection terminal. In this uh, aspect, uh, respect, I want to mention the, uh, the third one, provide customized services for V2X usage scenarios. It's just like we use an iPhone, we use a, a, a cell phone, like uh, 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 nowadays, and uh, we can use it uh, in different scenarios, uh, consuming, we can uh, we can use it to buy something, 
we can use it to uh, to social social function and in the smart vehicles of neurosoft system we can provide also the same and the customers customized services in some levels global navigation solution and uh, actually the smart uh, vehicle is actually a a like uh, the smart iphone and uh, it can supply the global navigation solution and uh, uh, the devices database natural speech and the services will be uh, will be supplied and we call call it a global navigation solution this is uh, how the we we talk uh, vehicle road cooperative cooperative uh, communica communication system the first is the forward collision, uh, collision warming. The second is uh, crossroad collision warming, warning. And uh, the third, blind spot warning. And of course, vehicle speed guidance based on signal lights. This is, uh, these services is, uh, is uh, supplied uh, by the system called VTOC Vehicle Road Cooperative Communication System. Neurosoft system also includes uh, some AR, uh, AR factors like AR navigation. This, uh, this can be put, uh, also can be put to uh, exper experimental use or uh, practical use. And uh, uh, the AR navigation system will be uh, uh, a very uh, exper uh, experiment, experimental scenario, and uh, we can use it as a uh, we can use, use the AR navigation before we uh, we put to, to put it to uh, pr production and uh, to test. It's safety, it's function. This is, uh, this is the, uh, the graph for its AR navigation. And uh, uh, you can see the lane line information display and uh, speed limit rem remain re reminder, camera reminder, arrow showing the, the direction of the vehicle. So it's just like we uh, the, the, the kids uh, play the play the game uh, like uh, in a visual visual uh, visual game. And uh, yes, it is very very easy, but it is very accurate. And uh, it, the second graph is about current land monitoring. And uh, it, is, uh, it will offer a great experience for the driver or for the users. The advanced uh, driving uh, Assistance system, uh, assistance system uh, include many factors like uh, lane keeping assistant uh, alloc A and lane departure warning, and and it is very complicated and advanced uh, system. And uh, the Neurosoft 
uh, had completed the development of this uh, system. So this is the visualization, and of course it's very, very complicated, and uh, even we cannot figure it, uh, figure it, it, it uh, them out uh, clearly. Uh, but it is a completed work, and uh, this is uh, the, the 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 lecture about a smart city and the uh, uh, smart vehicle in the smart city. I want to share with uh, with with you, and uh, I think uh, the smart vehicle is necessary, and uh, we cannot. Uh, about avoid uh, just like uh, the the first lecture mentioned in the twenty one century, and uh, we have to uh, to to counter some problems from climate uh, crisis or congestion uh, problems, and uh, the smart city the smart vehicle. Is uh, it is is the maybe the common problem for our world and uh, the human beings and uh, uh, maybe we have we have another thinking about the public transportation you know uh, like uh, the sharing the sharing sharing cars or or the decarbonization of the fuels so uh, we 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 need some new net energy and uh, new technology and of course new business model for the smart vehicles to operate in our smart city thank you all so uh, anita that's that's all Thank you for your presentation. Last speaker, we have Mr. Lu Muhammad Lufi Eko Nugroho from Bapeda, Semarang City. Yeah, for Mr. Lufi, you can start for presentation. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. <clears throat> uh, good afternoon, everyone. Could you hear my voice clearly? Uh, honorable yes. rector of uh, University of State, State of University, Dr. Yosef, and then uh, honorable distinguished uh, speaker from abroad, uh, Professor Anan Nayar, and also Dr. Peng Zhou, and uh, all of the participants uh, from across the country. Uh, let me brief explain uh, about uh, actually uh, my presentation is not about uh, specifically uh, smart vehicle because uh, as uh, uh, individual yes uh, maybe I'm uh, demanding uh, more uh, technology uh, uh, related to the how we can easily operate uh, our own vehicle, but as a government officer, as a uh, uh, city officer in Semarang, um, I, I cannot uh, uh, demanding uh, only on uh, on the, uh, smart vehicle, but uh, as a system of the city, uh, smart transportation become uh, our choice to uh develop our city uh better in the future so let me start to start to share my screen yeah so my my presentation is uh about uh not only uh, one individual uh, vehicle but uh, how the uh, city of Semarang respond uh, to solve the problem related to the uh, transportation. So the uh, transformation uh, between uh, starting uh, when we are start using the smart city solution uh, 
in a couple years ago so starting from 2013 until now so just a brief explanation about our city so maybe mostly from uh, the, the Indonesian participant already familiar with the city of Semarang, uh, located in the uh, central Java province in the middle of the Java Island, uh, with uh, 1.6 million inhabitants in 2020. And then we have, uh, yeah, uh, the last year we uh, all of the city uh, around the world. Uh, uh, have the uh, same um, uh, problem with the uh, economic uh, situation in the city. You know, we have a minus uh, economic growth, uh, but uh, compared to another uh, big city in Indonesia, we still, uh, yeah, and the, the number of the minus is not uh, too big compared to the other uh, big cities. And then, yeah, the GDP per capita, yeah, we uh, uh, decreased in 2020, uh, but we hope it will be better uh, by uh, the next year in the uh, 20, 21st or 22nd. 20, 20 and then, of course, uh, because of the economic situation uh, become worse, so the unemployment rate also increased uh, last year. And then the poverty also uh, increased uh, for 0.334%. Uh, uh, so uh, uh, almost 80,000 80, uh, population of the city uh, become the uh, poor people. And then the human development index, yes, uh, we also uh, occur the uh, uh, decreasing uh, the index last year. And this is the land use situation of the Semarang since 2011, 2014, 2012. And then the, the projection, uh, the next 10 year, 2031. So uh, 70 or 75, uh, percent of uh, the city uh, become uh, the uh, filled up area. And Semarang is also grow, uh, become the fifth uh, big city in Indonesia uh, with uh, uh, the, the basic economic activities uh, in the tertiary uh, economic uh, activity. So the trade and services uh, it's become uh, more uh, uh, dominated, dominate the economic uh, activity uh, uh, in Semarang. And then uh, let me just brief uh, the, to explain the uh, evolution of uh, uh, Semarang starting the nine until 19th century until now. So Semarang was formed by the young alluvium. Uh, so you can see in the uh, map uh, the yellow the yellow uh, line is uh, the the old uh, Semarang shore line. So uh, you can see the uh, the city hall, the city uh, the city uh, the CBD the Semarang CBD is uh, located uh, in the past is. Uh, was an ocean it include uh, the state of university in uh, somewhere around here actually is uh, uh, in the past is uh, become part of the uh, Java uh, ocean and uh, it is uh, our consequence um, become uh, one of the big city Indonesia with the uh, classical urban problem. So the, the city congestion and then flood, uh, the solid waste management and drought, the slum, slum area, the air pollution, the poverty and employment, uh, disaster and, and, and other. 
uh, become our daily problem that we uh, have to solve and then give uh, the solution to the uh, population, the citizen, and uh, can uh, fo foster the economic and at the end, uh, the uh, community welfare uh, become uh, our uh, main uh, goals uh, as a city to uh, provide the service to the uh, to our uh, citizen, and then we need smart so uh, solution. So uh, smart city concept is one of uh, uh, the concept that uh, we. Uh, try to implement uh, in the uh, city how to solve uh, the, 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 the problem. So uh, I can highlight uh, the uh, concept of the smart city is uh, how we can manage the resources effective and efficiently to deal with urban uh, challenges, how to utilizing the innovation, uh, integrated and sustainable solution in how to uh, we provide the infrastructure and uh, public uh, services and also at the end um, it is our uh, goal to increase the citizen uh, quality of life and the city of Marang started in 2013 uh, in the initiative of uh, Smart City, uh, starting with uh, the MOU with uh, uh, Peri Telkom. Peri Telkom is a state-owned company, uh, Indonesian state-owned company that uh, support the city. At the moment, is uh, the Ministry of uh, Communication and Information. Uh, launch the uh, 100 uh, smart city uh, in Indonesia. And then in 2014, we start to provide uh, more than 2,000 uh, free wifi to uh, at least we can um, uh, develop our infrastructure and uh, sharing our, uh, the knowledge or uh, how the people and uh, the citizen uh, get the better awareness uh, in uh, 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 together with the government uh, building the uh, Semarang as one of the smart city in Indonesia. And in 2015, we launched more than 100 system and application, um, web-based and also uh, Android or iOS-based. And in 2016, uh, all of the uh, agencies in the city of Semarang have a strong commitment to implement uh, and then deliver uh, their services uh, by using the smart city solution. And 2017, we integrate all of the system uh, in a one uh, our uh, a command command room. Yeah, we 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 develop one uh, command room that we call it a situation room. Uh, so we can monitor all of the application, all of the monitor in the city in a one uh, single room. And 2018, we uh, provide a 24/7. Uh, service uh, it's like a 911 in the uh, American movie yeah, we can uh, we can uh, respond on the report or the complaint uh, from the citizen uh, easily and then uh, can solve uh, the problem uh, 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 fast and in 2019 uh, we launched more than 10,000 CCTV in the neighborhood level. So at least one neighborhood in the city have uh, the uh, CCTV. And uh, 2020, uh, we try to make it uh, integrate in our uh, situation room. So our platform, our dashboard, we can combine, we can integrate uh, the 10,000 CCTV in one uh, dashboard or uh, application and then uh, put some uh, 
uh, CCTV analytic uh, uh, system. So uh, we, the system will help us to uh, uh, to uh, create or to develop a government uh, policy uh, using uh, automatication. So based on the uh, situation uh, out there, and then the system will analyze and then give uh, feedback and give the report to us, so we can uh, we can create or we can uh, do the uh, policy to uh, respond about the problem. Uh, it's just a scheme of uh, the uh, smart city in Semarang. So from uh, the economic and then uh, social infrastructure environment, uh, we transform uh, all of uh, the uh, coal in our midterm plan into uh, the uh, all of the uh, smart city solution. Uh, I think I, I will skip this. Also, this year, yeah, we use uh, the Karuta smart city model now with the uh, three uh, domain service so smart economy, smart society, and smart environment, and also uh, combination with the smart people, infrastructure, talking environment, and then also the government to manage the resources of uh, the city. So this is my our example of the smart city initiative. Uh, one of uh, the best feature from from uh, smart city uh, our smart city dashboard is uh, like uh, the information of uh, power outage from uh, the uh, PLN. Uh, it is the first city in Indonesia that implement uh, this uh, information. So re in the real time, uh, the citizen will uh, know what. It's going happen with the electricity in their uh, home or in their area, and then what time uh, the uh, electricity will uh, uh, getting or uh, getting uh, connected or uh, uh, getting uh, take offer. And then, uh, yes, this is uh, the, the, the portal, the integrated uh, data management, and then we combine all the data and then uh, public, uh, the citizen can access it uh, easily. And we also uh, create one uh, system, one uh, in, in the one dashboard, so one uh, map uh, this, uh, that contain uh, uh various uh, information and then also the public can easily uh, access this information this is our newest uh, smart city platform uh, we can uh, monitor in the real time uh, in, not only in the uh, our cbd but uh, all of uh, the 10,000, uh, more than 10,000 CCTV we can monitor in uh, this system. So it is uh, rela also related in the smart transportation. Uh, we, you can see in the uh, left uh, corner, the ATCS is uh, related to the uh, traffic uh, control uh, real time. And then also how to uh, enhance or uh, uh, improve the uh, quality of our service by using uh, the uh, non-cash uh, services in uh, our several uh, public service to the uh, citizen. And then also the real-time uh, infrastructure monitoring system so the drainage and then the street light, street lightning, uh, the tree monitoring system, and then the slum housing information information system, and also the water and uh, sanitation uh, information uh, system. So uh, when there there is a infrastructure failure or damage, and then respond from uh, the citizen, we can easily know uh, in which area in where we can uh, we can uh, go uh, fast to respond the complaint from the citizen 
uh, we also uh, develop uh, an integrated transportation information system. So more than 50, um, 50 uh, uh, corner. Uh, the, so the cross. Uh, in, in across the, the city already uh, equipped with uh, the uh, integrated transportation uh, system so from from uh, one command room uh, in the transportation agency can manage can easily uh, auto or automatically uh, if and if if we need uh, human uh, inter uh, human uh, activity to intervene the system, we can easily uh, using the automatic or also the uh, manual to control or to manage uh, our transportation system. So uh, using uh, the uh, this ATCS. And also uh, the uh, public transportation uh, we already have uh, 12 corridors uh, this year by the end of this year we will have uh, 12 uh, so it's become the one of our uh, smart uh, solution or uh, initiative to uh, at least we can uh, reduce the use of uh, the private vehicle uh, in the city and then uh, manage uh, the uh, transportation situation in the city uh, uh, getting uh, better with our uh, service and also equipped with the uh, transmarang with uh, uh, android based uh, information system so the passenger can easily uh, access and then see whether the bus is still uh, uh, five minutes or uh, we, the bus already closed uh, 30 seconds or uh, it is uh, easily uh, uh, access to the public. And our transportation system is also equipped with uh, the e e ticketing, so, uh, so non cash. Uh, payment uh, we already use uh, since uh, two, two years ago so it make uh, uh, people can can uh, access our service using whatever uh, the uh, uh, non cash uh, platform that they use and then this is uh, our initiative to uh, if uh, even we already have uh, the uh, public transportation in the city we want to improve the quality so uh, there was a complaint from uh, the citizen that uh, the past is uh, 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 have uh, the uh, high emission so because they're using the uh, diesel fuel uh, the black uh, 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 emission come out from 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 the bus, and then we in 2018 we try to start to using the hybrid technology, not only using the diesel fuel, but uh, also uh, using uh, the CNG. So we put uh, the converter in the uh, our uh, buses, and then. 70% uh, uh, using the CNG and then 30% using the diesel fuel. So uh, we reduce the emission uh, in our uh, 200. Uh, now we, we have the converter in our uh, 235 uh, passes. And this is the last, uh, just a couple of days ago, the mayor, Smarang mayor, tried to uh, develop or try to uh, use the electric uh, bus uh, because we are in Smarang, we already have five, um, five but to, to, today uh, uh, we already have a six. So, six uh, public charging station and uh, next year the mayor will start to apply 
uh, two places uh, to support the service uh, transparent service and also will create a public uh, charging station in our uh, uh, city hall so everyone to well if that already have uh, that already use the uh, electric uh, vehicle can uh, easily access this uh, charging station so uh, with cooperation with the uh, PLNL also uh, Pertamina we try to make uh, the electric vehicle is uh, become uh, uh, popular in the uh, uh, Semarang so I think that's all my presentation looking forward to have a fruitful discussion uh, in order to uh, let's uh, try to uh, 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 create a, a better solution for the uh, city of our human being life. Thank you for the occasion. Uh, so that's all. Thank you. Stop. Thank you for our presentation, Ms. and Mr. Lutfi. In the next session, we will uh, Q&A session, maybe from audience, wanna ask question? You can raise your hand. Okay, from Abigail Azeda, you can ask first. Is this sorry? Okay, thank you. Azeda. Yeah, uh, the first question, I have question for Dr. Anand. Dr. Anand? Yes, of course, ma'am. I'm listening. Please yeah. go ahead. Yeah, okay, thank you. Uh, what about the security aspect for the smart vehicle? Um, like one of the examples you mentioned earlier, smart cars, although there is already very good security in this regard, but is this possible for um, hackers to hack the device or smart car that is being used? Yeah? And besides um, being unsafe on the device, I think it is also not safe when we driving smart vehicle. Thank you. First of all, Abigail, uh, thank you for your wonderful question. In fact, it is, it is a question that I would like to stress more for everything. Let me tell you, if we talk of smart, if we talk of smart vehicles, when they actually started the research journey. So in the start point, we were not able, we were not happy, even as a security researcher and as an ethical hacker, I was pretty much personally not happy with the security. Because as we know that if you talk of smart car, we are communicating with 5G, we are communicating with sensors, we are having plethora of technologies like LADAR, RIDAR, everything in that. So anything, if there is one single exploit, a hacker can even, you can say, contaminate the data. It can even take control of your car. We just need one exploitability. That's the problem because we all know, ma'am, that uh, if we talk of big servers, you just need one vulnerability and I'm inside and I can spoil your data. I can even steal your data. But now, as I have told you that there was a time that when we started, the security was a big issue. Even security was a threat. People were not happy. But now we have blockchain technologies. We have advanced firewalls. And even there are some companies in Japan, in France, and even in Italy, even in Saudi Arabia, even in I know one company in Turkey. Israel also, they are working very hard in the security aspect. Israel is one of the forerunners that is actually making smart vehicles, drones. Even their drones network is even a secure network that nobody can peek into the video monitoring for that. So ma'am, as, I, I, as if you want to ask me that what I should do and what I should do the research, I would like to tell you that if you really ask me that, sir, where I should start the research, start learning blockchain as blockchain is the only answer to keep the security of these cars foolproof from end-to-end -end encryption from your car towards the 5G and towards the vehicular clouds. But today, as I'm told, telling you that today's car is almost very difficult to access, almost very difficult, which means if you, if you talk of today's points out of 100 as a hacker, I would like to give security 93 marks out of 100. And these seven points with the blockchain technologies and with some advanced encryption algorithms, because at one time we used AES 256 bit. Now with blockchain, we are converting to SHA-1 and maybe SHA-2 will be coming. So maybe this points will be 100 out of 100 by 2024. And that's my answer. Perfect answer. 
Okay, thank you so much. And I have a question also for Professor Chaufeng. Okay, Professor Chaufeng, uh, the next generation communication domain controller solution integrating with 5G, right? And then, but now or before the, right now, before 5G, maybe there are still many devices that use the 4G or LTA network. And then how are the smart car when when they are still using LTA or for, for, for G for the connection. Okay, Professor. Should professor. I answer? Should I answer? Oh, oh. oh okay. Madam, as I've already told you that uh, smart car is a plethora of options with sensor, oh. radar, radar, everything, and even the computer vision with advanced com uh, object recognition technologies. So you, you cannot say that, okay, one road is having 5G, then it is perfect. Every road has to be perfect. And that's the reason I'm telling you that if you really want to drive these vehicles, don't think that these vehicles will come faster. Even I am happy that these vehicles are coming even faster. Like, let me give you one example. At one time in graphics technology, like I am a gamer also, one time people used to say that this ray tracing, DLNS, like all these things will come in 2028. But now we see PlayStation 5, we see RTX 3080, 3090. That was even expected in yeah. 2028. It is coming in 2021. Okay, yeah. so don't think that only car is coming that you can uh, you can fly the car, you can take this car outside. You need to have a proper city planning, especially with communications. And let me tell you, the attonation rate and the error rate should be 10 raised to power minus 9, which is even not possible today in China and even in USA, not even in Korea. In Korea, I know the people, they are making the dummy smart cities. Even they also tell me today, sir, you are working with computer vision. You are a man of wireless communications. Why not you uh, research more into 5G plus and 6G? I said, okay, I start researching, but I can only research in MATLAB or maybe in some uh, uh, simulation based, but I don't have the hardware emulations. That's the problem. Because if you really want to do research, you have to improve your communication channels. 4G, LTE, it is not possible. Minimum I'm saying you 5G plus or preferably 6G, but that is a big if. But again, I'm saying you, it is even a big, big if that 6G or 5G plus will be 100% perfect unless we don't start using it, unless we can't comment on that. That's my answer to you. Okay, thank you so much, Dr. Anna. And also, uh, here are any question once again for um, Professor for Professor, sorry, for Professor Chaufang. Um, okay, if the if if the network connection suddenly stop, will this affect the, the smart car or um, for example, the cell phone battery device that we use to operate the smart car suddenly falls or it's direct operate or maybe break or fall down on the road when um, we are still driving using smart car and about advanced driving assistance system like as LAN Kim Assist or LKA, LGB, L, sorry, LGW, MCW, BSG, GVR, and other will run automatically if um, something happen, something happen with the device or smart car. Like that. Uh, I mean, if the connection network is, if, if the network connection in our smartphone, suddenly our smartphone is, Bro, or maybe the battery is low. So what happened with the smart car? Only one answer I would like to give you, ma'am, that uh, okay. if there's a problem with the communication technologies, then that's the reason that we are not actually fully trusting level five automation. When the car is oh. having full controls, that is autonomous. That's why I'm telling oh. you that uh, if you are talking of today's wireless technology, it will be too yeah. bad for all of us that we should invest in level five. We should start investing in level four, that if there is any problem with communication technologies, then the driver can take over the car. You understand mm -hmm. me? Otherwise, yeah. there will be a complete disaster. Oh. That's why I'm saying you as a researcher that if you start implementation, don't go for level five <clears throat> immediately. Go for level four first. Test the infrastructure, oh, okay. test the limits of wireless communication. If you are happy, satisfied, then start implementing level five. But still, we need to be sure that everything oh. is perfect. Okay. Otherwise, it will be road accidents immediately. <laughs> okay. okay. Thank you.
Thank you for Dr. Anan and also Professor. <laughs> okay, so the next, I guess you can start. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Thank you for your question. May I? Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Rajeshwari. I'm a third semester student of Stockholm University. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. My question are addressed to Mr. Anand, actually. <laughs> Hello. Good afternoon, Mr. Anand. Yes, Rajeshwari. Okay. Uh, my question is all about is also extending by the question of. KAZ, Abigail Azeda, about the how if the network suddenly shut down. But my question is, you said that people who can't drive actually can about drive properly with the smart vehicle. But how if the network suddenly shut down and that person and drive oh maybe uh, the that drive that driver can't drive properly even don't know really no don't really have knowledge about i understand ma'am i understand your question then how yeah. to manage it yeah okay okay i understand you hmm. ma'am that's the reason i would like to uh, give the answer same to same that uh, as you can see that the most important part of the car is not your technologies it is actually the communication network that's why we have to bring a city communication network to the best of the best possible with technologies. And again, I would like to answer you one question that if you go for level five automation mm -hmm. and you are not actually having confidence in the wireless communication of your city, and if the communication mm -hmm. breaks down, then there is a complete disaster because actually we are readily connected with the network and vehicular clouds. And let me tell you, if you talk of your car, the image recognition, the, the object recognition, it is happening in real time. Okay. Yeah. Otherwise, it will be a disaster. Yeah. So that's my answer to you that uh, if you talk of this, that type of thing that suppose I am the person I don't know how to drive the car, mm -hmm. then it is not for me, I have to wait till level five becomes perfect 100%. But if you really want to talk of today's cars, then I totally recommend you, you can go to level three, that is perfect done today. If your city is a smart city, your government is cooperating with uh, Indonesian government is cooperating for 5G network for 5G plus network, which is again, I can say it's a very expensive network. And most of the governments of the whole countries like China, Korea, it is from them because China affords, Korea affords, USA spends the money, Vietnam is spending the money. Okay. So even I'm from India, even India is right now not spending much on 5G plus. So yeah, yeah. ma'am, you can only work towards level three or level four. Level five is a big thing. Mm -hmm. So I can say, if you ask me that, sir, who will adapt level five, maybe number one will be USA followed by Korea. Then we can expect something good from France and China. That's the only possible. But so, even we will not expect everything from China. China will be limited parts because every part of China cannot be fully developed with 5G plus instantly. It takes years. Okay. Uh, sir, you said that the accuracy of the sensor is just approximately, uh, uh, approximately about 60 and the, until 70%. So yes. what is caused by, is it because uh, interruption while the data transmitting? No, ma'am. Actually, there are lots of reasons. If we talk of sensors, we are actually looking about throughput. We are looking towards delay. We are looking towards uh, faster artificial intelligence. So mm -hmm. I cannot give you some reasons because I'm a man of sensor communications. Sometimes we get good results. Even I'm a man of AI. I teach AI. Sometimes the algorithms are working very best. Sometimes they are not giving us conclusions. So this car is basically a cyber physical system. It has tons of problems that we are solving one by one. Okay, so don't think that only one sensor or one leader or maybe a or maybe a radar can be a problem. It could be lots of problems. Okay, sir. You know, ma'am, um, I would like to tell all of you that at one time when we have simple Python, we have simple libraries. The scenario was different, but now see Python, now see R, now see data science. It is complete different scenario. Actually, if you want to develop this technology, you have to develop the underlying technologies that are actually improving, and that is what the answer is. We need to sir, wait more. Okay, sir. Uh, I know that there are a lot of packages in Python which support AI and machine learning and etc. But so only about Python because I uh, I'm uh, I know about Python, but I'm not really interested about Python. But I'm going with Java actually. So is it possible to develop no, AI? If, uh, if all the students are listening to me, and if you really want to get connected into this research, now listen mm -hmm. to me very carefully. Use Python, but if you talk of libraries of artificial intelligence, then you have to learn the number one library in the world is OpenCV. Mm -hmm. 
followed mm-hmm. by TensorFlow. But right now in my lab, because we are doing our research, I am mm-hmm. teaching AI only with scikit-learn, with matplotlib, numpy, that is okay. But if you talk of research, we are talking of TensorFlow. And even I'm not using my computers, we are using NVIDIA Jetson Nano, that is an AI-based portable embedded system. And mm-hmm. after that, we are integrating sensors of ARC instruments, Texas instruments, LabVIEW, national instruments, we are integrating them. And plus we are using the NVIDIA smart vision technology that is actually designed for AI based computer, uh, these smart vehicles. So you have yeah. to be very good into Python. You have okay. to be C plus plus. Everything is required for this type of career. Ma'am, it's a complex area, very <laughs> complex. It's not for everybody. Okay. And so, uh, back to the topic. So, yeah. as you said, that smart vehicle is about machine learning through that yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, experience. Yeah, EA. Yeah. It, yes. it, it, it means that machine learn through that experience. So how if the same experience is repeating as we say, as we conclude that if the same input repeating, it will cause a data redundancy. And how if that data redundancy happen, it would it cause uh, it would it uh, give some impact to the machine. Let me give you an answer. Let me give you one answer, Rajeshwari. Actually, don't talk of machine learning when we talk of autonomous vehicles. We are is talking it different? About, yeah, it is not. Machine okay. learning is not a part. At one okay. time, at level three or level four, we are working on deep learning. Now we are working on mixed learning. We are talking of computational mm-hmm. intelligence, cognitive intelligence. We are working, even my team is working on federated learning. I want. Mm-hmm. I, I am even working, you will be stunned to know that I am working on my own learning. I want to make my own advanced learning techniques so that we can improve the hyperscalability for learning and making the decisions. But the sir, you said that, uh, that that machine learn from the past experience and through the experience we was there. Face. That was so there, ma'am. That it, was there. But you have okay. to improve. You have to improve. Okay. Yeah, I know that. So it means that that machine uh, using that machine learning algorithm, right? So yeah, how if that uh, data redundancy happen? Will it uh, give some impact to the machine performance? Ma'am, uh, I'm in this field from last three years. We have not seen any problems with regard to data redundancy, especially when we talk of uh, when we when we talk of real time learning and from experience. But mm-hmm. yes, if it happens, if it happens, uh, some data cleaning algorithms and data sanitization algorithms are working with that. And uh, we are not getting any sort of issues with regard to that. That is what I can comment because I work practically on these areas. Yeah. I have not faced that is any why I asked issue you, sir. Okay. Uh, and the last question, sir. Uh, you, you said that smart vehicle is commented by voice. Like, uh, can I take an example of the Google Assistant? We use voice to command Google Assistant to do this, to do that. Uh, some of people pronunciation it's not clear to Google Assistant, and mm-hmm. Google Assistant will misinterpret that what the people actually want. And how if it happens? with the smart vehicles, sir. Ma'am, now uh, what I'm going to tell you, maybe it would be a miracle answer for all of you. I don't know how many of you are regularly in touch with artificial intelligence. If you talk of uh, uh, how we interact with the car in the near future, we will not be trusting only like a Siri or Google or Amazon Alexa. We will be combining an artificial brain of a self-assistance mechanism, which is actually going to have hyper-threading hyper threading based learning hyper thread learn that we that we know and that will be using that still the system is under pre beta phase many okay. few of the few people know because my one friend is there in korea advanced institute of science and technology that institute is the big gun there because of this pandemic ma'am i am actually stuck in vietnam from last two years i am sorry to say to everybody yeah. because of this pandemic i am stuck otherwise if i would have taken my algorithms last year and this year even into korea maybe this we, we would have taken to more publications right now the flights are very closed here and uh, we are not working much practically that's the problem from the pandemic only okay 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 sir Thanks for answering and stay healthy. Stay healthy all. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. <laughs> yeah, thank you for Miss Azeda. Hey, Miss Razia, sorry. <laughs> and the next we have question for Mr. Anat Naya from ST from Stecom University. Uh, for question. There is a very Uh, good question that has come to me in the chat box. First of all, I would like to answer this question. Sir, is it possible we will have the flying car, invisible car or a amphibian car in the future? 
So I would like to tell you that flying car is already there. Even there is an amphibian car which can even drive on the road. It can go underwater. It can even fly in the air. That is also possible with the. There is one company, but now I don't remember. But it is possible now. Drone-based taxi is also being going to be possible in Singapore next year. You can even order from your uh, that is your Grab app or uh, your local taxi apps. But for the invisible car, everybody, many people ask me this question, sir. What about invisibility? Can we attain invisibility? Don't talk of this word invisibility. There is a word called camouflage. Now, in the word of camouflage technology, military, U.S. military. and even some people also say that even french military has this technology but still you can say that if this technology will be in the flying uh, in this cars and will that be available to common man it is still a big question because invisible car is a technology for military it is not uh, right now safe to be with the common man it is not and it should never be if you ask me for ethical concerns it should never be available to the common man it is only for the military and let it be remaining with the military even you have seen that french military has even made these jet packs like turbo man and they are flying from their vehicles to the naval ships that is okay it doesn't mean that this uh, turbo jet technology should be given in the market and i should buy this technology and i should be he- here and there it is not some technology should be with military should be with the limited departments not with the common man it is not it is dangerous yeah thank you for professor anath and the next question we have from dr Professor Penzo, with the various innovation in smart vehicle, vehicle that I explained earlier, is there most that detrimental impact on human with this vehicle innovation? Please explain, Professor Penzo. Hmm. So this is a question for me. Yeah. So. Novita, can you can you repeat it again? Yeah, repeat I will it? repeat again. Yes. Um, with the various innovation in smart vehicle vehicle, sorry, that I explained earlier, is there a most? I'm sorry, is there a most detrimental impacts on human with this vehicle vehicle innovation? Innovation. Is there any? Yeah. Oh, sorry. So, uh, I have some problem to catch you and then <laughs> the Vita. You can type the question on chat box. Yes, I, 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 I want to. Uh, can I relay the problem to 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 Doctor Naya? <laughs> yeah. I need to again. Yeah. Is there a most detrimental impact on human with this vehicle innovations? Oh. I had just answered the the question just now in the chat room, and <laughs> yeah. sorry, you know, uh, I think mm, I think uh, the most uh, uh, detrimental impact uh, on humans with this vehicle uh, vehicle innovation is. Is you know uh, the technology risk? Why it is technology risk? Because um, the technology uh, how the uh, is the technology is the two coin uh, is the two sides of a coin or the two edges of a, a sword. So we can use t- technology, but uh, when the technology is immature. Is not so mature. We use the technology. It can bring. It can bring big risk for us. Uh, and uh, we know, as we know, uh, the Tesla, Tesla accidents, uh, autopilot system uh, have held held uh, some cases. So, I think uh, uh, nowadays the people should be uh, should uh, be a, a, a bit rational. Uh, before the uh, before the technology at once and uh, 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 we can we can use the technology and uh, to to make some happiness for our human beings, but uh, we also should be rational before the technology at once. And uh, you know, 
just like uh, there is some some uh, still some uh, technology problem problems and uh, even some ethics problems beside technology risk so uh, for us i think uh, we should we should be positive about tech technology advance but uh, we should be also cautionary, uh, cautionary, cautionary to the uh, technology risk. So, uh, in my eyes, uh, the vision of the smart vehicle, uh, uh, the vision or the future of the smart vehicle is promising, but uh, there is still uh, quite a way uh, for us to go. So. Uh, the answer, uh, this, this is my answer. Yeah, thank you for your answer. And the next, and the next question, we have question for Mr. Lutfi. Yeah. In the future, what kind of smart city will Semarang be? Okay. Yeah. Thank you for the question. Uh, just uh, like I mentioned before, that uh, the city will always face uh, the 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 problem. So, what kind of smart city solution that we will use? So, as long as the solution is uh, become uh, uh, our uh, task, uh, our responsible to the citizen. To, to, to provide the a better service for this uh, our our citizen, so we we will use it. So based on the uh, uh, my presentation, that the uh, the goal of the uh, smart city solution is how to uh, create or increase the quality of life of the uh, our citizen. So that is uh, my answer. So. Uh, in, in, in more specific, maybe uh, we can. Uh, it it depends on the uh, what what is the, the the actual problem of the city. So we will use that uh, solution. I think this is my answer. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for your answer. And the next question we have from Miss Prati from YouTube Live Chat to Dr. Anand. So for questions, so boring company from Lion Mass will publish a new transportation. Do you prefer underground or in the air transportation? Ma'am, that depends on the infrastructure. Again, I would like to tell you, of course, in the near future, we prefer the, uh, the, the communication standards or the vehicle standards in the air. Yeah. But, uh, but don't think that only air-based vehicles will be the solution. So actually what I prefer is that, that uh, a vehicle should be working on the road like an ordinary traditional vehicle, but it has some flying capability. So it should be multi, like two in one. That would be the perfect flying vehicle for any uh, country, for any city, and of course, in any complex terrain also. Yeah, thank you. And this question also to Professor Pengzo. Maybe we can have an answer from you. And uh, yeah, uh, uh, so uh, I would like to answer this question in a, in a uh, totally sense that uh, as a smart vehicle, it must have the error rectifying uh, function. So, if there is a problem in, in, in one part and uh, uh, the, the, the beautiful or the perfect, perfect system should, should have its own function to, to rectify its own problem. But, uh, uh, you know, this is what the technology advance means. And uh, so the technology advance space means the, the, the technology will not, will not be uh, always perfect. And uh, uh, we should go, uh, that, that much wait for, for us to go. And uh, so if one problem happens and uh, perfectly, we, we need some 
uh, some function to to solve the problem, but uh, uh, but we we cannot expect, expect a lot because because the technology problem always exists, and uh, we know the first class uh, auto plot uh, system may be Tesla, but Tesla still have problems. So there's no perfect system in the world and uh, uh, we are all, always on the way to solving some problems. So that's my answer. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for Professor Pengzo. Yeah. And the uh, next question we have from Abigail Azeda. Uh, that's yeah, a problem for, for me. I, I, I just answered. <laughs> <again, maybe. laughs> Thank uh, you, Abigail. Yeah, actually, I want to ask. Uh, okay, yeah, actually, I want to ask to Mr. Anand. Hello. Hello. Maybe the connection is lost. For Ms. Rajesh? I need to Hello. Hello. Hello, I'm able to hear you. Victory is unstable. So, hello, can you all hear me? Hello? Yeah, sure. Okay, uh, Mr. Anand, you said that the benefits of the smart vehicle is reducing the pollution. What is it? Can you explain me briefly? Of course, ma'am, if you talk of today's electric vehicles, are they using petrol, diesel, or any type of things? Mm -hmm. They are not. So they are eco vehicles. So mm -hmm. if we talk of the flying vehicles, maybe we will use another uh, resource. And even I would like to tell you that there is one technology that people are not actually talking about. That is even a hidden technology and you just try to find it. Mm -hmm. uh, that will be actually driving the, uh, the huge needs of uh, power of smart grids and even the smart cities. That will be fuel cells. So why not the fuel cells will be there in the uh, flying vehicles? So you can say that the futuristic uh, work for any sort of like uh, power consumption or other thing will be a total, uh, you can say, eco-friendly and there will be almost no pollution. Electric vehicles are made for to reduce the pollution. Mm -hmm. You can see that, that in China, in China now, uh, you can see that there was a, uh, uh, that uh, in Beijing, in Shanghai, in Shenzhen, if you talk of these type of cities, Guangdong province, Zhangsheng province, there is a big problem of pollution, but now these cities are being transferring and they are even motivating the people to buy electric vehicles. And even the license registration is now an easy process. In Vietnam, we are even, uh, uh, you can say we have the electric vehicles, electric motors over here, uh, like motor, motor bikes, and we are increasing like anything. So the big cities, uh, they have to go towards electric vehicles, eco green facilities. That's why I'm saying you that don't focus on smart city, focus on sustainable city, okay. society 5.0. Okay. Uh, sir, but uh, as we know that the electricity is source of the fossil, uh, like we said that uh, renewable powers or renewable electricity just made up just around 20% of the global total power consumption. So if I can conclude, if I mean, in my opinion, the increasing of the smart speaker, it also can uh, increase the pollution also, but indirectly so. I, afraid, most, uh, uh, I don't want to comment on this question now, but I okay. would like to tell you that uh, as countries like Vietnam, they are actually becoming solar-based solar uh, superpowers in the near world. And mm -hmm. in the near future, as you can see, you can see some LinkedIn based videos. If you follow some uh, electric vehicles or other blocks, you can mm -hmm. see that the person was parking the vehicle and the parking assistance was there. And once mm -hmm. the vehicle was closed, a flower based solar power, uh, solar engine that came out. And even recently, you can say that uh, Chinese scientists have found a very breakthrough that even mm -hmm. I was stunned that uh, Chinese have increased their capability in solar technology. They can even uh, use uh, solar technology in the night now. So that was okay. a biggest uh, breakthrough by the Chinese scientists. I was I was impressed by them. But the future, if you talk of the, the power consumption, other things, no doubt batteries will be there. But solar ecosystem will be playing a crucial role. That's my answer. Future okay. is sustainable. Future is sustainable. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you for answering. Good afternoon. 
Good afternoon. Abigail. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for there, uh, Mr. There is a Mr. Sam Harrison. Yeah. A question for yes, me. Okay. So I can I can repeat the question. Excuse me, sir. I have a question for Mr. Peng Zhao. How do we use social media and other technology wisely in this situation while pandemic still exists and the hoax news still spreads? So it will make a panic attack for all our people now. I mean, is there any advice from you to all of us to use social media and other technology wisely and very careful to avoid a fake news that will be exist until now? Wow, Sam Harrison, this question for me, I must, uh, you must catch something from my lecture and uh, I, I feel I feel I feel a bit moved by your question. So you know, my academic field includes some uh, called uh, uh, neurology. Do you know the the, the academic uh, field called neurology? And uh, uh, in economics, there a uh, big a uh, big guy called uh, Robert Schiller. Uh, he invented uh, a new. Um, a new direction of economic study called narrative economics. So I return to the question, uh, what is hoax news? What is, uh, you know, uh, what is the, the you, you say, a fake news? So every news is kind of narr narrative. So, to, to distinct, distinct the, the, the narrative, the, the fake or true, it depends on our recognition ability. So Harrison, I, I can give you the advice that reading and thinking. So some, uh, sometimes the truth lies in our recognition. The truth lies in our recognition, and uh, uh, usually it is a, a common sense. It uh, it it may be a, a little uh, abstract, but uh, I can only see 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 this too much this much because, uh, Mr. Harrison, your question is too uh, uh, is a big is a big question. And for everyone of us, and uh, I think, I think when you ask this question, you may have some answer in your heart, in your mind. Thank you, Harrison. Yeah, thank you for Professor Benzo. And the next we have question for Mr. Anan. Yeah. Can I get answer for me? Yeah, I have already given the answer to uh, that is Denny Sesmako. Ses Ses yeah. Oh. Yeah. But uh, I would like to give one answer to Mr. Sam Harrison that uh, he told that how do we use social media and other technology wisely in the situation while pandemic still exists and Hawk News? Of course, the fake news is there. And it makes the panic attack worldwide. Even let me tell you that recently in our country in Vietnam, there was also a big problem when uh, quacks news uh, happened. And of course, uh, it can create a bigger issue. You know, what is the problem in the whole world? If we talk of information connected word, it is actually the acute as well as the best algorithm that can be designed for fake news detection. So I would like to tell you that all these news agencies, and all everything and even Facebook is now focusing their intelligence towards transfer learning and even ensemble learning. These are the two actual learnings in the real time. If you do your research over there in these learnings, you will find that these libraries are so strong that if you apply this type of artificial intelligence with Facebook, with Twitter, you can almost filter almost the fake news to almost 86 to 91%. 
So you can say that, of course, this type of uh, fake news will be a real deadly situation, but still we need AI and especially with ensemble and transfer learning that can be used to detect them and to filter them. So that's my answer to you. So work on that and uh, try to do your research in these two technologies. If there is any problem, you can search me. That is uh, on Google Scholar. You can search, all of, all of you can search me on Anand Nayar with just on Google Scholar. You can see some of my research papers that are published on fake news uh, detection. And even we are also doing some more research on transfer learning. And uh, recently we are going to get our one paper in nature that will be exactly towards how we can have fake news acute detection in real time when it is happening with lots of uh, news agencies, especially like Apple News, Google News, all these things can also be a disaster. So how we can do that soon, the paper will be online because we are working with this area on uh, fake news detection with that. Yeah. Okay, thank you for Dr. Anat. I think there will be no more question again. And the uh, next event will be continued to Ms. Anissa. So Ms. Anissa, you can take her. You can handle that. Okay. Okay, thank you, uh, Ms. Navita. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you to all the speakers. Uh, uh, one of uh, our uh, audience would uh, uh, thank you to Mr. Lutfi. Uh, he uh, she said that uh, to look for what to the next or what happened to the smart next uh, about the transportation about the smart city. Okay, so to all the honorable speaker, uh, thank you so much. Your material. Uh, are very great. Uh, your knowledge are uh, would be useful for today's webinar. Uh, thank you to Dutan, Dutan University in Vietnam. Uh, thank you to Dalian Yusuf uh, University Inform of Information from China and to Babeta 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 Kota Semarang. Thank you so much. Uh, that will be. Uh, I apologize if there's any mistake, if there's any technical issue. I apologize for that. Thank you to all the participants, to all the audience. Uh, we will see you again to, to the next event. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to all the speakers. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Thank Pezo. You the... Thank you, Mr. Bye -bye. Thank, you, Thank you, Mr. Lutfi. Yeah, Thank Professor you. Anna. Dr. Pengzo, thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you. I'll see you guys. Uh, I think the message is coming. Take photo. I think so. We need to. Oh, yeah. yes. I think we okay. need to take a photo. Oh, yeah. Okay. We let's take a photo. photo for my LinkedIn. I need this. I wish, uh, I wish I can see you guys offline. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, I so. I from the last two years, I'm just on my MacBook and doing all. <laughs> let's take, uh, okay, Miss Novita. Are you ready to take the photo? Thank yeah. you. Okay, wait, wait a second. Okay. Okay. Uh, Ms. Navita, are you ready? Yes. Okay. I'll, I'll count the count, uh, one, two, three, okay? One, two, three. Okay, one more time, everyone. One, two, three. Okay, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you thank so you. much. Thank you, thank you to all the speakers. You. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye.